Okay, here we are at step two. What we're going to be talking about is building the sax valves. And I think all of this uh, cosmetic plumbing and tubing and stuff will save for a separate video. <clears throat> well, as much as we can. What you're looking at right now is I'm holding a picture, as you can see, of the actual Robbie the Robot that I took back in the 1990s at uh, Bill Malone's house. But what you may find interesting about having a, a picture that you can get a close-up is you can actually see the metal rod that goes across here. You can actually see, if you know what you're looking for, that these balls were originally clear and the red was painted. Well, it isn't painted. The back of Robbie's head was made out of a styrene that had a rust red color to it and the ball was glued on before they painted the gunmetal part. So the rust red shows from behind and the same is true with the small round divots here see the larger ones have a hole because the sax valve goes through there but these ones were glued on and the red ABS would show behind those but uh, let's, now that we're into the mechanics of this whole thing the first thing you're gonna need to find is uh, some of the 120 to 1 gear ratio TT motors if you plan on building this thing the same way I did. And this is the Amazon site or page where I actually found some where they shipped what they said they were going to ship. I don't know the seller. All I know is they sent what they said they were going to send. But if you look here, they, they sell the 1 to 48 you know, that's the way they, in China they like to list it. I like to list it the correct way, 48 to 1. 148 in two pieces, six pieces, or the 1 to 120, two pieces. And here is the price if you buy six pieces. So I'd ordered six pieces from this seller. And I just brought this page up today. So as of 9-22-2020, this seller still has those motors in stock and for 13 bucks and you get six motors it's pretty cheap and the good thing about Amazon of course is if they screw up then you can return them and get your money back or deal with it one way or the other because way back when I decided I was going to start making these parts to share with you guys about Robbie I ordered from China 10 motors of the 120 to 1 and of course what when the box finally arrived six weeks later it had six motors in it not ten no explanation there and all six motors were the 48 to one and of course they refused to give you your money back but I paid such a small amount of money for them and there was no shipping charge that I went fine I'll use these motors or something it isn't worth my time fighting with them over them so that's when I went back to Amazon and found these so just thought I'd share that with you you're gonna need them thought we could start there uh, if I can find my mouse cursor and get it to show up, there it is. Sometimes it just disappears on you. Let's start with here. These are all the caps that we're going to be gluing onto uh, the Robbie's head part that we're going to need first. So you're going to need to print these first, and if you're on an FDM printer, you're going to print them in clear if you have it translucent, clear, whatever you've got that's handy. And we're going to need a long shaft that runs through the whole thing. Let's go back to another picture of the real Robbie here. Here we go. Give you another side profile where you can actually see the red there, the clear here showing the gun metal through. Just another interesting angle. Anyway, you're going to need um, a shaft and what I ended up doing Oh, before I go on, the holes I believe I, I'd set at three millimeter. So I found a coat hanger and had the right uh, copper kind of look. And uh, it was here at home, so I didn't have to go to the hobby store or, or order anything online. And it measured about mm, 2.5 millimeter in diameter, so it uh, fit well. Anyway, you're going to need that because. Okay, got the cursor to reappear because we're going to want to start gluing these things in place and you're going to need to be able to run the rod through to make sure they're all lined up exactly where they need to be. Again, I, I kind of explained in an earlier video that I couldn't do things in the correct order because I was designing and building parts ahead of myself. 
you know, the first thing you're going to want to do is, is make your mainframe parts and glue the mainframe parts together, sand and paint the mainframe parts. So both of them would have been there. Then the next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to glue all of these in, in place, all of them, all the way across with the rods so that they're all lined up right. I think there'll be more pictures. This is just sitting there. We wouldn't start with the sacks rust. We don't even want that on there. It's just on in this picture. Again, I was test fitting things. But uh, need to get all these on there lined up with that rod and glued in, in place. Inside, look at the braces. I guess it showed a little bit of that. Here's uh, a couple of the sacks valves. Uh, this is showing one right off the printer and one that I did a little bit of sanding on. I should have done more because you want to get it as smooth looking as possible. I think I've got the image. Yes, we do. Here is the position that I print those in. That way you don't need any supports. Stand it up on end just like that. And the only thing you might want to do is possibly a raft on the very bottom so it stays secured on your bed until the printing is done. Because then you only have to sand and clean up this one edge. Um, one other thing you're going to want to do is sand back along here on this back edge. You want to angle that a little bit so it doesn't hang up on the, the sax rest when it's trying to lift away. If you get a sharp edge there, it can hang up. So kind of knock the back edge down there a little, clean up the front edge. Then, of course, sand the piss out of the whole thing if you're trying to get a real nice look so that when you uh, chrome paint it, it uh, actually looks like metal. And let's go back to our pictures. So that you can see how the metal rod comes through and how these are basically hanging off the rod. I left this one off so that you could see how that how that's going to be. So next thing you're going to want to set up is the the cams that actually strike the sax valves to make them move. Each um, sax valve gets hit three times if you're doing this the way the original Robbie was done. So there'll be three fingers. As these spin around they hit the ends of the valve to make them flip up. The motor will bolt into this motor mount two screws on either side, four screws all together. I'm using 632 short screws and uh, these just push on to the shaft. They're already keyed. Make sure everything is always an opposite. So if this one's aiming this way, you'll want that one aiming back. Keep everything as far apart as possible. You notice these large holes, that provides alignment. The whole reason that I wanted you to put on these parts first is there's a collar around those parts on the ones that go through that stick through on the back and because they stick through that gives us a way to align things like this so when we go to glue this piece in there's be one on this side and there's one on this side over here that you can't see in this picture that keeps it aligned correctly so now you can kind of see there's a hole on either side and it actually will only glue down the center part here we're looking through the very top of the head where the gyro section would be, looking down through the gyro hole. So what you're seeing is here's one of those holes on this motor mount, there's the other one. Here's the top of the front support that's glued in the front of your mainframe. So this just glues onto that. So this keeps us aligned right. You've got these shoved on, glue that puppy in position. Here it is from the side, so you can kind of see how the sax valves hang through. So you can see how this turns around, it's going to catch those, which is going to lift them up. And um, one thing is you probably don't, you do need to, you're going to want to use some color-coded wire off that motor, so you can get like red for positive and black for negative or something like that, so that you always get it running the right direction. If you have it run the wrong direction when this thing's all set up, this comes around it's going to end up uh, jamming up everything you don't want that it's another view and we're looking down through the top of the gyro hole again it's just giving you a different different view from the outside looking in so this is the next part there's a shaft it's a hex shaft and it pushes right in none of this stuff has to be glued pushes right into the end 
of the motor cam that was already on there and these cams slide on the shaft as well and they'll space themselves all the way on and then this is a bushing that you put on the end of this last one you can do the same thing on the other side and this mount as you can see has double holes because that way it can go to the other side and flip over we're going to use the top hole on whichever side you're on and there's a hole in here that'll line up around that so you put your glue on there line that on shove it up to the bushing just like this so then you'll know that everything on this side is going to be held in place for striking correctly it's a hex shaft you've got six flippers so you just want to make sure that you always have everything is close to being opposites as you can you don't it's not a sequence from left to right it's supposed to look very random uh, this is kind of skipping ahead I think we'll come back to that so here we are looking at the other side I've put the axle in putting the cams on getting ready to put the end plate on there we go so now we have the other side all hooked up all right I guess we might as well talk about talk about the lighting I'll go back to that so these little pieces are meant for holding LEDs. In this case, I just had some LEDs that were left over for some dollar store yard lights at some point. You can use any LED you want. But uh, they'll glue into the hole behind the sack's rest, which we haven't made yet, and they'll angle up at the correct angle to illuminate the sack's rest. So they sit in there like that. Uh, if you have matched LEDs, you can solder, you know, the cathode to the cathode and the anode to the anode, and then just put uh, a single current limiting resistor off one of the legs, doesn't matter which one, so that you don't fry them. Uh, again, on these, you know, anywhere from 39 ohms to 120 ohms is going to be fine. It's going to work it up. So once they're all soldered in there, you can bridge all of the negatives, all the cathodes together. And then off the resistors, let's say you put them on the anodes, bridge all of those together. Just like that. And then do a test to make sure that they all light up. And that's skipping ahead. Here's another view of what it would look like. Test fitting uh, one of the sax rests on. So now let's go back to the sax rest. I think I have pictures back in the beginning. That would be back here somewhere. Here we go. So it has a part, the sax rest itself will be open, and then it'll be this part that I print in white, which is translucent because it's thin, that you glue in there. That way you can print this part, sand it, paint it the gunmetal color, and then glue these in, and you don't have to do any masking off. I mean, you only other option is to print it as one piece and then try to mask the whole thing off. That's a lot of work. So to do it that way. I'm holding a flashlight behind it to show how it's going to illuminate that. And showing the relative position of one of the sacks valves themselves against the sacks rest. Okay, so that brings us back where we were. There's a little button piece that you can uh, glue into that hole, which we will use later for our tubing that comes off. But when it comes time to glue the sacks rest on, and this isn't a bad time to do it now that we have our lights on and everything, set your whole mainframe on something flat like a counter, and the sacks rest all the way down on the ground, as far down as it can go, so it's sitting flat. And start at the center. It may not show up very well, but here's the crack between the left and the right. So start on the center and line one edge up with and glue that one in and then put the one over here, butt them against each other. If you start from the center and work your way out, you'll get everything lined up just right. So here you can see the center crack between the two. Here's the first one on. Glue the next one on, then glue the next one on and just work your way out. Here's the uh, ball end piece. If you uh, have a resin printer you could probably print them in uh, clear resin and then paint the disc part on the back frame red and then when you glue it over it'll look more like the original in this case I just printed it in well in this case it was some white because that's what was loaded it doesn't matter I painted it with a rust red primer to give it the right color look 
Um, another option would be you can go to hobby stores and you can buy uh, clear balls that they sell like for ornaments at Christmas time and it's just about that time of the year and you can actually cut them down with a jeweler saw and, and wedge them in if you want a ni nice clear plastic ball there. So that gets that all lined up. Uh, you don't want to run your your sax motor moving the sax valves without the rests in place because when the rests aren't there these can tip back further than they normally would which means their stem on the inside is aiming up higher so when that cam, cam comes around it'll just hit and it'll lock everything up. So yes you have to run the motor enough to know that you got the direction right and the wire color coded coming off it right but once you've done that try to resist running it until after you get all these sacks rest in place so things don't jam up on you. There's a hole where that shaft shides all the way through so now that you got everything done you've trimmed your shaft I'd take a little bit of glue and just uh, glue up the end holes so there's no way that it can slip out. So I think that's basically all you need to know. If I've missed something we'll do another catch-up video. As far as gluing the parts, the PLA parts onto the painted parts and all that kind of stuff, just use some of the E6000, which is also sold under the name Goop, G-O-O-P, like they have automotive goop and wood goop and shoe goop. It's all the same. In fact, this is goop. It's just rebranded to be sold for more money. But uh, this works very well for holding all of those sax parts onto the front. And uh, if you ever have to get something off, you can get in there with a blade and cut it and get it loose. And because it's uh, rubbery, the part isn't going to crack and just come loose and come off. It's all going to stay in place. So, have I covered everything I wanted to cover in this video? I think so. Um, if not, leave comments down below and we'll do a catch-up video if we need to. But I think the next video will probably move up top for the uh, uh, wigwag flippers because we need to get those installed while there's still a lot of room to get in there. And then we'd probably move on to sticking the gyros in and then we'll move on to the side ear cups, the scanners. And then we'll catch up all the tubular uh, details that are on the front. So that's it for this build.